Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today we're going to look at the murder of Officer Don Williams, Memphis PD, Tennessee. Now folks, this particular case here with Don, when he died, his death was not categorized as an on-duty death. Don was shot and killed. He was working an off-duty job as a security guard. Now, he wasn't wearing any Memphis Police Department gear or uniform or anything. Now, I think most members of the Memphis Police Department, myself included, pretty well agreed with the fact that Don died doing a secondary job. He didn't die in the performance of his duties as a Memphis police officer, so I think that was just a given. But now at some point, several years after the event, the director of the police department must have decided that he was going to designate Don's death as an on-duty death. Now, Don was 38 years old when he died. He had 16 years on with the Memphis Police Department. And a wife and kids and Don was a good fellow. I don't think Don had an enemy on the police department. He was just, he was just all kinds of a good person. And anybody that ever met him would agree with that for the most part. Except for one fella, a fella with a violent history and an inability to stay out of prison. Now, most of the information I'm going to use for this episode came from the Tennessee Supreme Court during the appellate process. That's December 25th, 1997. Now, Don and at least one other off-duty Memphis police officer, they were security guards working at Crumpy's nightclub. Now, Mr. Crumpy, he owns he owned a whole parcel of... Uh, wing joints there in Memphis. If you were going to eat wings in Memphis, you had to eat Mr. Crumpy's for sure. Now this comedy club, this night club that Mr. Crumpy had, it was on Hollywood there north of the north leg of 240 there. They're on the west side, in fact. Now a business had rented out Crumpy's night club that night for a a little party. Now the resource material all varies on how many off-duty officers were working. Some of it says two. The Tennessee Supreme Court says two. Some others says three. But in any event, Don is out by the front doors with another officer. And then allegedly there's a, a third officer that's inside. Now the suspect crashed the party. I don't think anybody really cared who showed up, but it was supposed to be invitation only. But anyways, he shows up. Now they got a band and they got a comedian. They got all kinds of entertainment for Christmas night. Now the clothing the suspect was wearing played a a big part in this case or would play a big part. So much so that the even the Tennessee Supreme Court mentions what he was wearing, which was a black derby, multicolored sweater, a gold vest, dark pants, and gold shoes. Now, it 
some point during this party, the suspect uh, got evidently rambunctious or something inside the club. So they threw him out. He was told to leave. Uh, he gets out there and now he can't find his car. One of his buddies had moved it, didn't tell him. Well, now he's upset over that. Now, according to the resource material in the Tennessee Supreme Court, Don and the other officer told the suspect that, yeah, your car's on the lot. It just got moved. Well, he didn't believe and he's upset. So he makes some threats about coming back and shooting up the club. Well, this goes on for a few minutes. Finally, the friend of the suspect who had moved the car came out and told him, yeah, I moved your car and showed him where it was at. So now the defendant goes to his car, and before he leaves, he, he tells Officer Williams and the second officer that he's going to be back. Now, a witness would later say that the suspect told him that he'd gotten into it with the security guard and that the security guard had sucker punched him. Now, this witness would later testify that he didn't see any signs he didn't see any signs that the suspect had been struck in any way, which that don't sound like Don. That's not how Don operated, so I discard that whether the witness saw it or not. Now they watched the suspect leave the parking lot, but later on he comes back, he tries to get back in the club and they told him he couldn't go back in the club. So now for the next half hour, 45 minutes, the suspect's sitting out in the parking lot. In fact, he's actually sitting underneath a street light there on the club parking lot. Now at one point, Officer Williams, he makes a phone call to the police department. And they send the car out. And then the suspect, he leaves for the on-duty police get there. Well, then later on, the suspect comes back again. Well, he's finally detained by officers. And they're trying to make a decision on what to do with the suspect, lock him up or not. Now, it is Christmas. And the eventual decision is, is instead of locking the suspect up, they're just going to let him go. Now, the officer that was on the scene, the on-duty officer, he wrote down the suspect's information from his driver's license and he gave it to Don. And Don took the piece of paper and put it in his pocket. So the suspect leaves the scene again. Now, at around 2.30 or 3 o'clock, the club's getting ready to, this party's getting ready to shut down. And Don and the other officer are sitting, standing near the front doors. And they're watching the band pack up their equipment. Now several witnesses saw a man running towards Don and the second officer. And he had a pistol in his hand down by his right leg. Now the suspect fired three rounds just about point blank into the back of Don's head. Now, some of the witnesses that saw this man do the shooting said that he was wearing brown pants and an unbuttoned vest. Now, later on, one of these witnesses, when she was shown a photo lineup, which is going to be six pictures, there was two pictures that she thought might be the suspect. Well, one of them did turn out to be the suspect. But now, unfortunately, that's not a conclusive identification. Now, the officer that was out there with Don, he didn't see the actual shooting. He heard the gunshots. He turned, and he sees Don on the ground. And he said he got a good look at the defendant, the suspect. Now, the suspect was wearing a a covering over the bottom part of his face up to his nose. Now the area around the front doors was well lit and the officer would later testify that he was no more than five or six feet from the suspect. 
Now, the officer said that the suspect had a gold bandana. Oh, that's what he was using to cover his face. And that he was still wearing a multicolored sweater and dark pants. The same outfit he remembered the man wearing that they had thrown off the lot. The suspect. The officer's absolutely for sure the shooter is the man that they threw off the parking lot. Now, this officer chases a suspect. The suspect runs down what they describe as an alley. Now, that's got to be that little roadway there between Mr. Crumpy's business and that other business just east of it. So he must have run northbound, evidently, from the description in the resource material. And according to this officer now, the suspect got back into the same vehicle that he'd been driving prior to the shooting. The same old Delta 88. It was a maroon or burgundy color. Now later on, this officer would positively identify the defendant from a photo lineup made the point to say that the suspect had lazy or droopy eyes. He said he had no doubt that the suspect was the shooter. Now, Don was transported from the the scene down to the med. Now, that one of the gunshot wounds had shattered Don's spine. So Don was paralyzed, I believe, from the neck down and he couldn't breathe on his own. Uh, That's a pretty bad, that's a pretty bad way to be living. Don stayed on a ventilator for almost a month. Now he, he developed pneumonia and some other ailments while he's in the hospital. And then Don, he died on January 29th, 1998. Now this suspect it took him a few days to locate him. He had went to a girlfriend's house. He stayed there a few hours. He left his vehicle there. He took the tags off of it. He took the clothes that he'd been wearing and he hid them along with the license plate off the car somewhere in this girlfriend's house. Now, I think his actual date of arrest was December 27th, so we're talking about two days. Now, this recovered clothing, they discovered gunshot residue on the the vest the suspect had been wearing. Now, in his first trial, he's convicted of murder and he's sentenced to death. Now, I think that's 2011 or 10, somewhere right around there. Well, in 2012, he's granted a retrial. And that second trial, it, it's 11 to 1 for guilty with one holdout. So the judge declares a mistrial. So the state of Tennessee tries a third time. Now, some resource material says there was only three total trials. I've got other resource material says there was four trials. Now... We're going to go with the four trial scenario because in the third trial, the jury goes eight to four for not guilty. Now, finally, on the fourth trial, they let the defendant plead guilty to second degree murder and they release him from prison in 2013. Now, just to show you that uh, what a person is is generally what they're always going to be. He's not out of, he's not breathing free air for very long and he gets into another shooting and he shoots a 14 year old inside of a store. So he's arrested and he's charged with attempted murder and because of his violent past, he's pretty well given a life sentence for his second degree murder charge. And he will not I would hope not breathe free air again, because he sure doesn't need to. You know, some people talked about the fact that Don was such a good guy. Everybody loved him. He just, 
He just was a good man. And him to be taken from us by somebody like this suspect, it's just it's a sad thing. Doesn't make any sense. Officer Don Williams, end of watch, January 29th, 1998.